I have an amazing ability to under or overwater house plants, which results in something like this. So today we're going to make a plant stand with a hidden self-watering reservoir. Let's get to it. I started with the plant stand top, which will consist of two pieces of sapele glued together with a reservoir cut in the middle. I wanted to create a very shallow shelf for the planter to sit down in, so I used the pot to trace its diameter. I then used my router and circle cutting jig to cut the outline for the shelf. The circle jig is very easy to use. You simply attach the pivot screw in the center of the circle, align the router bit on the traced circle line, and then cut out the outline. Next, I moved on to cutting the larger of the two circles. The size didn't really matter, so I set the circle jig to cut just within the width of the board. To cut all the way through, I had to do multiple passes, lowering the router a quarter inch each pass. I then cut all the way through the center using the same process to create the top portion of the reservoir. Next, I cut the smaller bottom circle the same way, but only cut the center void about halfway through. My router did skip a little on me, but the mess up will be hidden, so I went with it. To give the plant stand top a little shape, I added a round over on the top and bottom of both circles. And then I gave everything a quick sand to 320 grit. Next, I moved back to the shop to glue the two circles together, making sure to align the center holes. To prevent the wood from absorbing the water, I started by applying a layer of Total Boat's Penetrating Epoxy. Once that was dry, I added another layer of Total Boat's Maker Epoxy, which is a little thicker. This may have been overkill, but I'm always in the camp of better safe than sorry. While that dried, I moved on to making the concrete base. To connect the stand's leg to the concrete base, I incorporated a flange on the top of the base. Using a Forstner bit, I cut a hole in the bottom of the bowl so that the flange would sit flush to the surface of the base. Then, to temporarily close the flange opening, I used a combination of nuts and washers. To give the concrete something to grab onto, I super glued some screws into the flange. Next, I used some hot glue to hold the flange in place and make the seam watertight for the concrete pour. I also used some silicone on the inside seam. Next, I mixed up some Quickrete 5000 to the consistency of oatmeal and poured it into the bowl. To get rid of as many bubbles or blemishes in the concrete, it's important to poke and vibrate the bowl as you go. After about a day or so, the concrete had cured and it was ready to be taken out of the mold. I wanted to make the base darker, so I wiped on some India ink. The India ink gives the concrete almost a metallic look sometimes, which can be a cool effect. With the base done, I switched back to the top, which was ready for finish. To finish the top, I went with Maker Brand's Simple Finish with Wax, which is, as the name would suggest, a super simple finish to apply, and leaves a really nice natural finish. You simply wipe it on, wait 15 minutes or so, and then wipe off the excess. Next, I moved on to attaching another flange to the bottom of the top. Because of the reservoir, I had to use some very shallow screws, which I spray painted black to match the ones on the base. Okay, now for the self-watering or self-regulating part. The idea is that you insert synthetic strings into the soil of the plant through the hole in the bottom of the pot, leaving a couple inches hanging out of the bottom, which will sit down in the reservoir filled with water. The plant then pulls the water up into the soil as it needs it, thereby eliminating any guessing as to when and how much water the plant needs. I know it sounds a little crazy, but it totally works. All you need to do is remember to make sure the reservoir has water in it every couple of days.
With the top done, we are ready for final assembly. To do that, I grabbed a half inch coupling and a couple pipes to connect the top to the base, and then simply screwed everything together and it was done. Or was it? Well guys, I thought I was done, but when I did the final assembly, it just it didn't look right to me. I think part of the issue was that the dark concrete and the pipes were too close in color, uh, so there wasn't enough contrast. So I started by wrapping the pipes with leather, um, which I, I think is a really nice addition anyway. So I'm happy with that, but still, it, it still doesn't look right to me. And I think what it is is that the proportions of the base to the top are off. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bowl, uh, which is a little bit wider, uh, about the same size as the top, and, uh, and make another concrete base. Uh, but before I do that, let me show you how I wrap the pipes in leather. To add the leather accents to the pipes, I started by cutting the leather down to length, which ended up being eight and a half inches. Then I just eyeballed how wide the piece would need to be to completely wrap the pipe. Next, I used my wing divider and some leather pricking irons to add stitching holes to each side of the seam. And then I used the corset stitch to close the seam and wrap the pipe. If you want more details on how to do this stitch and others, I made a video dedicated to leather stitching where I go in depth into the process, and I'll leave a link above for you to check it out. I used essentially the same process to make the new wider base, only this time I had a small leak which made the flange a little rusty. But since the rust was really just on the surface, I simply used some acetone and an old toothbrush to remove it, and it worked great. Finally, to protect the floor from getting scratched, I cut a scrap piece of leather to size and glued it to the bottom of the base with some Tandy Leather Eco Weld. After that, all that was left was to swap out the new base for the old one, and we're done! If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that subscribe and bell button. I also post a lot of behind the scenes and smaller scale projects as Ethan Carter Designs on Instagram and would love to have you follow me there as well. All right guys, I think I'm actually done this time. So I made that new base with a wider bowl, which is about the same size as the top and I think that really fixed the proportion issue I was having. I also decided not to stain the concrete with the India ink this time. I think, I just like the contrast between the light concrete and the darker pipes. So I think that was a nice fix as well. So yeah, that's it. Uh, the only thing left is really to put some water in there and put a plant on top and I think we're done. So thanks for checking out the channel. Until next time, keep making.